and we should be good to go. All righty. Jenna pulled up here. All right, so this is the German Village Commission uh, hearing. So that is Tuesday, September 1st, 2020. It is 4.06 p.m. We are in attendance here on the interwebs. Uh, next, motion, next commission monthly business meeting uh, will be 12 noon, uh, Tuesday, September 22nd, 2020. It'll be held virtual by WebEx. The next commission hearing will be 4 p.m. Tuesday, October 6th, 2020. And that will also be held by uh, WebEx. And we'll move to swear in staff. So staff, if you please raise your right hands. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do, Jacqueline Lehman, Assistant Historic Preservation Officer. Thank you, Jacqueline. And then we'll go through the introduction of the commissioners present. Uh, so we'll start off with a quick call. Uh, Commissioner Panzer. I'm here. Uh, Commissioner Thiel. Here. Commissioner Durst. Present. Commissioner Farrell. I'm here. Commissioner McCoy. Commissioner McCoy, you muted. Present. Sorry, was having a couldn't get it done mute. No worries. And Commissioner Foley. Present and accounted for. And Anthony Hartke, Chair. Uh, moving on to approval of meeting minutes from Tuesday, August 4th, 2020. Is there a motion for approval? I move to approve the meeting minutes from the last meeting. Our second. Commissioner Durst moved. Commissioner Ferriel second. Are there any questions on the motion? Uh, uh, a quick poll. Uh, Commissioner Panzer. Aye. Commissioner Thiel. Aye. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Ferriel. Aye. Commissioner McCoy. Aye. Commissioner Foley. Aye. Chair votes aye. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Uh, items for public forum. That one. Uh, no public forum or no request. Okay. All right, we'll move on to the approval of staff approvals. So the staff approvals begin on page four of your agenda. Starting off with sure. recusals. People going once, going twice. No refusals. Is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the uh, to ratify the staff approvals. Second. All right, Commissioner Farrell uh, moved. Commissioner Thiel seconded. Any questions on the motion? All right, we'll take the vote. Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Farrell? Aye. Commissioner McCoy? Aye. Commissioner Foley? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Ayes have it. Moving on to the applications for certificates of appropriateness. Uh, item number one, GV-20-09-011546 City Park Avenue. For Scott Remus or Greg Oliver. Or another applicant. This is Scott Remus from here. All right, uh, Mr. Remus, have you got your video turned on? Uh, yeah, it says it's working. Is, are, can yep. you not see me? I see it. I just had to scroll through okay. to find your face. If you please raise your okay. right hand. Yep. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. And please state your name for the record. Uh, Scott Remus. Thank you very much. Okay. Jacqueline. Okay, so this application is to propose removing the existing crumbling retaining wall to the north of the set. To pour concrete cover for a new wall and install a new block face with bell crest 560 brick and limestone purple. Replace steps with new limestone slab steps. 
to remove the crumbling coping on the wall to the south of the steps and to face the existing wall of Bellcrest 563 and install a new limestone coping and to remove and replace the iron fencing on top of the walls with new and install a new iron gate. So some feedback from the August 18th uh, German Village Business Meeting included that the commissioners noted that the existing iron fencing on the top of the walls and iron gate appeared south salvageable and that the commissioners would like to see the fencing and the gate reinstalled. The commissioners also noted that the dimensions of the stonework should remain the same, including the limestone caps. Uh, staff does agree with commissioners' comments and recommends approval of the application with the comments provided at the from the feedback from the business meeting. All right. Uh, does the applicant have anything to add? Yeah, I had um, uh, my sales rep from Fortin go out and look at the um, look at the iron fence and gate, and he said with the it's been because of the like the dislodging and the and the crumbling of the stone and things of that nature. Um, he said it's kind of twisted and that there are pieces missing. Um, and you have to replace some pieces and his suggestion was to replace with new. Um, so it all matched and was um, all the same material. And, um, you know, instead of how, trying to rework that twisting and, and things that have happened with the fence itself. Yeah. So his, his suggestion was to replace it. Questions, comments from the commission. And the, my question would be the replacement is like for like. Yeah, it's good. It's the exact same style. Um, uh, everything would be the same. It's just new instead of uh, trying to rework with the old. And it's um, Fortin is the company that would be. In mm -hmm. so. This is Commissioner Thiel. I just don't think it's that damaged that it cannot be salvaged. I was, like I said, I was going on the recommendation from um, when they went out to take a look at that in the estimating process. I mean, there may be parts that need to be replaced, but I don't think the whole thing does. Well, and this is a recommendation from the outfit that helps to replace it. <laughs> exactly. Do we have any idea of the age of the fence? Or we know. Uh, I do not have an idea of, of when it was. The, the, the homeowner, um, I asked him if he knew when that was installed. He said he didn't, he wasn't aware. He said his guess was maybe sometime in the 80s, but he didn't have any any um, documentation or anything like that. Get, given the fact that it's leaded in place, I, I would, and Commissioner Thiel, you probably know better than I would, or Commissioner Durst, but that method of securing those fences has not been used in recent times. Yeah, it was the 1880s, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> 1880s, I agree. I, well, I mean, it, I, I think it was used up, you know, certainly up until World War II, but I think there, there's there's not a lot of evidence of it being used beyond that. Yeah, I would agree that it's, it's pre-World War II, probably, it could even be pre-World War One, to be honest. Oh, yeah, I, what I intended to say is it, it's unlikely that it's newer than post-World War II. Earlier, yeah, I mean, it could that fence could be 120, 140 years old. Um, I, I think there there are two things. One is that that um, while Fortin certainly has the capabilities of repairing old fences, that that seems to have not that that seems to have been occupying. A smaller and smaller portion of their business model, as as we've seen recently, that they are predominantly um, working on installing uh, installing new products. That's part one. Part two is even if we were to consider um, approving a, a new uh, or, or a recreated fence here, um, I for one, there's there's no way I would con even consider doing it without detailed drawings of exactly what the replacements are. Um, there's, you know, say you're going to do it exactly like this. I, I can I can look at this now and, and think of at least three or four things 
that it is unlikely they would do in the same way that that, that they uh, that this fence exists. So I just I I just this fence looks like it's in too good a shape to throw away a historic part of the fabric of the village. The retaining wall underneath it looks like it's block. Yeah, on the south side, it definitely is. Um, you can see on the yeah on the wall to the right on the south side is is somewhat newer. Is definitely a block, and it's in pretty good condition. The wall itself. So on the other side of the stairs, right? There's the stairs divides yeah. it. Exactly. That's the south to the right is the south side of the stairs and that wall is, is definitely like CMU block that um, Maybe they just repaired that section. Yeah, and the other and the other section on the north side um, is definitely in worse shape. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering, I mean, it does look like the limestone on top of the block is old, certainly the old. Um, yeah. yeah. So they probably just replaced that limestone. They probably took it out, put that wall in, and put the limestone back. Previously, and one of the one of the other things about the um, well, there there are two issues about the drawing um, of the uh, retaining wall that I kind of take exception to. One is the uh, the cap that's on the that's shown on the drawing is considerably thinner than or appears to be considerably thinner than the cap that's on the wall the existing wall and that if we were to to <clears throat> allow a replacement of that you know the material and the uh, and the dimensions of of all those materials would have to be in keeping with what was there okay on the on the limestone for the coping yeah yeah, I saw that in the notes, and I, I talked with the homeowner about it as well, and and we discussed it. Um, so and I did take note of that you wanted to have that be the same dimensions as what was there. Not necessarily in our purview, but you probably want to put some kind of drain and back there too to to keep this wall from yeah going over down the road. The wall, yeah. yeah, which we excavate. Uh, sorry, did I not have that in my? Um, uh -uh. No, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, we'll we'll put drainage behind there. Again, it's not part of our purview, but it was just I just noticed it wasn't drawn. So if I'm reading this right, the the one part of wall is going to be refaced, but the block wall is going to stay in place, and the other side of the gate, you're going to take the wall down and rebuild it completely, which means that whole retaining wall is going to be approximately four inches more towards the street than what it is now. The Yes. Ned, can you say that one more time? Because I'm slightly confused by that. So one side of the gate, they're going to just reface the existing block wall. And on the other side of the gate, they're going to take the, the whole retaining wall down and build a new one. And therefore, by refacing the existing block wall, Jay, it's going to move four inches closer to the street. I, uh, you know, I understand exactly what you're saying and I'm, and I apologize because I did not pick that up before and that's a problem. I didn't catch it either until I'm looking at the actually looking at it. I mean, I guess 1 of my questions is why are we not talking about a parged block wall on the left side as we as exists on the right side and just reparging the. Uh, the wall on the right side, there was some brief talk about that in the business meeting. Yeah. Like the question is, is, is anybody on the commission in favor of the application as submitted? We'll give the, the applicant some feedback here. Doesn't sound like yeah. there's potential. So to the applicant, 
is this are there items that you'd wish to to alter or we can vote on the application as is uh, or we can continue the application to the next meeting i want to give you some options here so you're not just stuck spinning your wheels okay so <clears throat> if i if i have it as is and we face that so essentially um you know kind of what i was from the first analysis was just gain that it was essentially you guys <clears throat> sorry are you, uh, i'm sorry i'm stumbling um <clears throat> the um so my options are you know change the um change with the new you want to reuse the fence and you want to change the the um, limestone um, but now we're talking about not wanting me to come further out toward the road I think the general consensus, and I'm not trying to speak for everybody, is that it feels like the fence, the limestone, and the porridge wall are all historic. And so if we're going to replace it, we'd like to keep what other parts are salvageable. Yeah. And whatever we're going to replace, we'd like to replace in kind rather than modify it with brick um, facing. That's I think that's the general consensus of the room. Um, Just what others. So you want to be left with sorry i didn't mean to cut you off there that's okay you wanted to just so if i redo the the north side of the north wall where it's crumbling just you would prefer it be left as the um the con the cmu block and not have uh, a part no part like a parts concrete face like it looks like so you'd put a a parts coat over top of the block yeah. portland cement yeah, yeah. Because it seems like that's historically what was there is, I think, what we're all coming to terms with. Is that fair to everybody else? Yeah, I, I think mm -hmm. you. Yeah, Brent, I think you got it. The, the, what we're looking at is what is significant. I'm sorry, missed the last part. What we're looking at is significant. Uh huh. <clears throat> so you could either modify your application. <laughs> to say that, or you could review it with your client. You could continue it and review it for, with your client, or you could ask us to vote on what you submitted, but it sounds like that the likelihood of that passing is not good right now. Uh, it does sound that way. <laughs> <laughs> um, I suppose I can review with my client then um, and go over kind of what you're um, suggesting that we, how we move forward and modify. Um, and I'll, it sounds like I'll have to do that. Does that mean that I will need to reapply for the next month or? So if, you, if you request for us to continue the application, um, we can vote to continue it and that'll put this application on the next meeting agenda uh, towards the top of the agenda already. So you won't have to do an application. You just need to talk with, with Jacqueline at the city uh, to make sure you provide her any additional details or updated information and she can put it with the application. Okay. Uh, then it sounds like that that's what I need to do. Okay. Then I'll motion to continue GV 209011. Second. I think Commissioner McCoy seconded that. Any questions on the motion? All right. We'll take the vote. Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Farrell? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner McCoy? Aye. Commissioner Foley? Aye. Chair votes aye. Ayes have it. Thank you very much. Sure. All right, moving on to item number two, GV-20-09-012, 641 Brust Street. Looks like looking for uh, Mr. Hugis or Ms. Graff. Aye. Aye. <laughs> All right. Can you... I'm looking for you. Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. I can please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. William Hugus, architect. Thank you very much. Jacqueline? 
Yeah, so this application involves a roof replacement, including removing the existing asphalt shingles on an original section on the house and to replace with asphalt shingles from the roof shingle list. Um, the application also includes replacing siding and including removing the existing siding and the, the existing wood lap siding that is in poor condition uh, down to the studs to add the OSB sheathing and house wrap and to add siding, either smooth wood lap siding or scalloped drop siding by Boral. The applicant would also like to replace window and door flat casings to match original profiles and repair wood windows. Some feedback uh, made at the August 18th business meeting included uh, the commissioners asking to clarify whether the interim will be proud of the new signing for the work photo provided. And the commissioners noted that in addition to the flat casing, the trim board should match the original profiles and that the corner boards appear to be currently missing and that the proposed four lapped wood siding uh, option proposed by the applicant is the preferred option. Okay. Ms. Hugis, do you have anything to add? I did not hear the uh, the choice of whether we use lapped siding to replace the siding that's there or drop siding. Which one does the commission prefer? Now we talked about that. This client, is, this, this client, Anthony, is 84. God bless her heart. She wants to leave, leave the house in great shape. She's willing to go through this whole remove of the asphalt shingles that were applied in the 30s. Uh, we provided uh, photographs, the siding below it almost always on these buildings with asphalt shingles on the walls the siding is just horrible shape so we would have to replace the lap siding there is no sheathing under the lap siding but the lap siding that's there is a full inch thick so we would put 7 16 inch plywood new lap siding if that's the preference of the commission um, the new trim around the windows would be proud just like it would have been on the original and corner boards and and freeze boards would all be replaced per the guidelines book suggestions. Do we have an example of what the one by six gallop drop siding is or looks like? Boral? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's... We use it extensively. Um, oh, the last two reciting jobs, it's exactly what we use. It's got the scallop at the top. Um, and by current, not available. This month. It's uh, it's more money as. Well, I think you're freezing slightly. Though. I'm sorry. You were cutting it out there, Bill. Yeah. Look at that picture. <laughs> For some reason. It's so if the, if the wood form. siding math is. If the wood siding matches exactly, why wouldn't we just do that? And she's willing to do that. I mean, it's you makes could. sense to me. You can. Absolutely. It's available. Uh, I'm, I'm of the opinion to, to, to keep it what it was, uh, if at all possible. We're fine with that. I'm one opinion, though. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. You're, important. You're an important one. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not, but I agree as well. <laughs> All right. We've got four trees. I've got Including some myself. fresh uh, thick corn to, to bribe people with, please. <laughs> we, don't, we don't take bribes, Mr. Yugas. <laughs> I know. The uh, All right. So sounds like that's the, the preferred option. Uh, looking at the rest of the application, 
Any other questions or concerns from the commission? No, I like I like it, and it's good that you're able to get some sheathing on there with the thicknesses. I think that's going to help the, the building as well. All right. Any other questions or comments? If not, is there a motion? Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, on item GV 20-09-12, I move to approve as submitted with the preference of the wood lap siding being provided in the project. All right, we got, we got a motion. Is there a second? Second. second. I'll let Ms. Commissioner Foley have that one. I think I heard him first. <laughs> Are there any questions on the motion? All right, we'll take the vote. Uh, Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Commissioner Durst? Aye. There we go. Commissioner Farrell? Aye. Commissioner McCoy? Aye. Commissioner Foley? Aye. Chair votes aye. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Bill. Moving on to item number three, GV-20-09-013, 630 South 3rd Street. Uh, hello, this is Ted Musolowitz. Thank you. I didn't want to butcher your name, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so you just call me Ted, it's fine. All right, Ted, please uh, raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. It's Ted Musolowitz, Garmin Miller Architects. Thank you very much. Anthony, Thank Anthony, you. this is Mr. Commissioner Foley. I'm going to uh, recuse myself for this one. I'm going to turn my video off. Thank you very much. What the record show, Commissioner Foley is recusing. Jacqueline? Okay, so this application uh, is a request for a recommendation uh, regarding a change of use. Um, the applicant would like to return the building to its original uh, use as an education uh, school. The building would serve as a middle school for the St. Mary Parish, and the building has previously been operating as a golden hobby shop. The school, uh, the subject building was a school originally and constructed in the 1860s until the school closed in about 1976. Um, and then the building has been used as that golden hobby shop and possibly other items in the interim. All right. Does the applicant have anything else to add? Um, I. I think that covers it. I'd say that um, I think we're excited to have the opportunity to change the school to its original use and uh, I think, uh, I guess, reinforce uh, the St. Mary's School and Parish as kind of an anchor to the uh, anchor to the German Village community. So. All right. Any questions, comments from the commissioners? I believe the uh, one comment I remember or question from the commission that came to the business meeting uh, was if there were any exterior alterations being done as part of this. I know that just the uh, change of use, I think getting the full information would be good to. Yeah, uh, we, we are not anticipating any exterior changes. Uh, there has been a staff approval for uh, repair and restoration of the windows and the cornice. Um, which there's water damage on the cornice and uh, I guess paint removing various various damage to the windows that we're repairing. Yeah. Um, there may be as you know, internally we're looking at uh, options for the mechanical system replacement or repair. So there may be some uh, staff approvals that submissions for staff approval for mechanical screening as we work through that. It's our intention that we're not intending to modify the exterior of the building in any way. Yep. Any other comments, Commission, from the Commission? If not, is there a motion for a recommendation? Uh, Mr. Chair, on item GV 20 09 113, I move to recommend the uh, zoning variance. Second. Uh, Commissioner Thiel, the first. Commissioner McCoy had the second. Yes. Right. Any questions on the motion? We'll take the vote. Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Farrell? Aye. Commissioner McCoy? Aye. Commissioner McCoy? Aye. All right. Uh, Commissioner Foley has recused. Chair votes aye. Uh, I have it. 
motion is recommended. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, moving on to item number four. This is a continued application GV 20 07 041 245 Lansing Street. Yeah. Mr. On the call. Mr. Chairman, I'm here. All right, right, right hand raised. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. Please state your name for the record. Mark Hours, Mode Architects, representing the homeowner. Thank you very much. Jacqueline. This application is to modify the rear door opening of the house um, to demolish an existing non historic garage structure and replace it with a carriage house with living space above the garage. And this carriage house would have sleeping quarters and a bathroom <laughs> and a kitchen. Uh, exterior materials would be oral, nickel gap siding, cement <laughs> panels, and IPE slat railings. All right, and before we jump back to the applicant, uh, let the record show Commissioner Foley is back on the record. All right, Mr. Hours, anything to add? Uh, just point out that we've modified the alley elevation based on the feedback that we've received at the last couple of meetings. Um, I think it's made the structure more subservient and uh, has attempted to fit it into the alley scape uh, in a more um, contributing. Uh, I don't know the word I'm searching for, I'm drawing a blank, but more sensitive than it was before. We've taken all of the contemporary cladding materials off of the public face. Um, so I, I don't think there's much more to say about this. I think most of you have seen it several times, so I'll, I'll shut up and listen. All right, uh, questions from the comments, questions or comments from the commission? Yeah, I'll lead off since I seem to be the most critical. <laughs> So, again, um, Mark, you have made some changes. I don't think it's sufficient enough to make this an appropriate solution to the, the alley scape. Um, north side, again, is one story garages with perpendicular and parallel ridges to the alley. Um, you are a two story flat roof structure that is alien to that uh, motif. The south side, you've got two two story residents and one and one and a half story residents which doesn't justify an ancillary building across the narrow alley to have a similar massing. Uh, the remainder of the structures are one-story garages and industrial addition to the Whittier commercial building on that side also. So I think that all is, is not framed well for what you're proposing. Um, again, the proposed massing exceeds the structures adjacent. The height exceeds the average of the adjacent structures. The window modulation is more akin to a residence across the alley than a two-car garage or even a carriage house. Um, and again, I remind you that the preservation movement was in response to demolition of existing structures to be replaced by the latest style in opposition to the context to make a statement, which I think is what's actually happening here. Um, I was reminded from being at CAPSI that uh, there are four strategies to design. One is a literal, literal rip replication the second is an interpretation within the existing styles. The third is an abstract reference to existing styles. And the fourth is intentional opposition. Uh, the first and the fourth are ones that we don't really want to see in historic districts. Um, and I believe the first, and, and that's it, but I, I'm sorry, Mark, I believe this is an intentional opposition to make a statement to uh, what everything is, is good about the village. And this is, um, again, uh, losing the integrity of what the historic language is in the in the village by little cuts, and I I'm not for this at all. I'm sorry. Uh, this is Commissioner Panzer. I I had um, it it was quite interesting. I had started the last go round on this being on the fence and found myself um, agreeing. Um, agreeing with the opposition to the previous iteration of this plan. Um, but I don't think that, that uh, and, and I think what Commissioner Thiel said was really interesting. And, and, and if I had to pin this into one of those four categories, I would pin it current in, in its current iteration pretty squarely in the third category, not in the fourth. But I think that's, I mean, it's what makes first races. I think that this has moved um, back into a form and a materiality that is not um, uncommon to alleys within the village. The massing 
is um, in the in the way it's portrayed um, no longer gives me the kind of pause it did when the materiality was so different uh, and and when the materiality materiality was so far into the village so i'm uh, I'm just okay with this i I don't mean to say just okay I'm fine with this I've got no problem with it any longer at all So I think it would be a an immediate precedent for anyone who wanted a modern architecture garage or maybe addition uh, in the village. But we have to worry about the incremental effect of the decisions we make, not just one off at the time. But this, the, this has the risk of beginning of not beginning because it's begun elsewhere uh, in the village of, of continuing the incremental change of the architectural character of the village. Yeah, but it's the, in and yeah, it's in and out. But the 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 time. I mean, the there has been incremental change within uh, within the village continuously since it was founded, you know, over 150 years ago. And nothing in our guidelines says that that incremental change is by its nature bad. It, it's when things become overpowering to the, to the contributing aesthetic that it becomes bad. And as I said, I agree that, that it had, had crossed that line before. But I think that there, there are any number of examples of uh, of additions and carriage houses that, that we, and in some case, principal residences, that we've allowed uh, architecture that that is clearly contemporary without being denigrating to the historic aesthetic. And I think especially in an alley, um, and, and although this is what we describe, which I don't know whether anybody else describes as a residential alley, um, it's a, a turn of phrase that we've used here for a long time, um, I, I don't think that, that this in any way denigrates the, um, the existing architecture within the alley, <laughs> nor would a, a continuation of, of things that are as subtle as this. Um, and, and I think it, it, is, it is now a pretty subtle expression of contemporary architecture as opposed to, to what it was in its previous or in its prior iterations. So, Jay. You said incremental change is inherent in the district. Historic preservation districts are there to prevent change, whether it's major or incremental, so that that fabric is maintained. And whether this is an alley or whether it's, a, as you said, it's common alleys all over the village, I don't think so. Is it is it appropriate for this alley specifically because this is where it's going to be built? I don't think so. I think you are, again, as Jeff is saying, we are incrementally losing the fabric of the village one little piece at a time until none of it will matter anymore. But we're and not. I think it needs to end. But okay, well, well, on on that, then we have a fundamental disagreement. Um, if what you're saying is that the only architecture that's appropriate to go in is architecture that would have been built during what was previously described as the, um, or what it is today described as the period of significance, as opposed to what even now is being discussed as being a changed period of significance. I, I, I it's, it, that's a fundamental disagreement. Well, if you think that the only things that should be built are things that would have been built a hundred years ago, then we, we've got a fundamental problem with our guidelines and everything else. Jay, I made the comment that replication is not an appropriate solution either. What we need to do is we need to highlight and celebrate the existing historic preservation, not by putting something out there that denigrates it and speaks louder than what it does. And this and speaks I, louder I don't, and, says, well, this, and this says, look at me, I am more important than everything else down this alley. That is while not I, correct. While I don't, while I don't disagree with the fundamentals of what you just said, I, it, this is where we've got just a difference of opinion in terms of whether it it is an intrusion in, into it. I don't believe that the design as it currently stands is an intrusion. Doesn't match the massing. Doesn't match the height. 
doesn't even match the modulation of the openings. I can't imagine of anything being more of an intrusion across three characteristics. I think That's the gear you're looking at right there says it all. I think we're called to make a judgment as commissioners whether or not we believe this is in the the context of the guidelines as we see them and as they're written. Um, and as I see them and as they're written, and we've debated this several times recently, it talks about <laughs> Uh, varying the three the three main categories in new construction, massing, detailing, and materials. And I fall on the side of Jay, the same side as Jay, that this is varying in enough to distinguish it from the existing, but not varying so much to make it too foreign. And I think we have to be careful uh, as commissioners to not um keep this as a space to put our philosophies of what we think it should be we need to put it as a space of what we think we need to interpret the the guidelines to say, say. it's just my opinion and i would disagree with that brent because we are charged with our opinions protecting the district respectfully disagree and i can appreciate your perspective though Commissioner Durst, last thoughts? I, I think since the original garage building that was here, I'm trying to remember how contemporary it was. I just know it was not historic. So at, I'm also weighing that it's not like we lost a historic building, met all of that criteria and wound up with this modern replacement. Any other comments from the commission? No, and I would agree with, with, with Commissioner Durst there. And I think Ned, you and I actually often agree the, the most on preserving uh, buildings um, that are contributing. And so I think that the fact that it's not a contributing Building so, I'm not defending the demolition of the garage at all. It's the replacement yeah. not being characteristic and actually taking away from the district's value. That's my concern. Am I am I moaning the loss of the garage? Not at all. Not at all. It's not historic. Everything. I, what I'm looking at is what this does to not only mm -hmm. this alley but also the value of the fabric across the historic district. And I I find that a really big problem. Again, this is this is oppositional design. I want to be opposite of what is in this alley. I want to be opposite of what is out there in the village. I want to be, look at me. That is wrong. All right. I think we focused mainly on the garage. I think we kind of got a feel for the majority of the commission. Uh, real quick, any thoughts on the, the door uh, modification on the primary structure? Any issues with the primary structure? It's on the back of the house. It's not significant. Mm -hmm. Correct. That's on an addition from 2007, 2004, excuse yeah. me. Yeah. I just want to make sure the applicant got feedback on that specifically before we take a vote. Uh, so, hours we can take a vote. Is that your your desire? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I have a vote. All right, Mr. Chairman, I have a motion on agenda item number four, GV twenty dash o nine dash o four one to approve as submitted. Okay. Hey, Commissioner McCoy, that was a second. Yes. Any questions on the motion? All right, we'll take the vote. Uh, Commissioner Panzer. Aye. Commissioner Thiel. Nay. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Ferriel. No. Commissioner McCoy. Aye. Commissioner Foley. Aye. Chair votes aye. Ayes have it. Thank you, everyone. Moving on to item number five, uh, GB 20 09 015. 
95 East Deshel. For uh, Laurie Gladder, or Gary Ardell, or some other applicant. We have an applicant for 95 East Deschler. Steve Hurt. There we go. All right. Uh, Steve, looking for your camera. Looking through. There we go. I see him. You please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and but the truth. I do. And please state your name for the record. Steve Hurt with Urban Order Architecture. All right. Jacqueline. Okay, this application is to, uh, proposing to modify the lower right window opening at the rear elevation to match the existing upper left window opening. Uh, the vinyl window would be replaced with a Marvin aluminum plywood window. Um, the applicant would also like to replace the existing rear door with a full light, flush, glazed smooth fiberglass door. The original transom and frame are to be retained. Some feedback from the August 18th uh, GPC business meeting included that the commissioners requested some additional close-up photos of the windows to help determine uh, the infill versus the original masonry. And the commissioner the closed rear door. The applicant has provided uh, both materials. The commissioners also requested sandbar maps um, from staff, which has been added to the materials. Um, and just to note that staff uh, would want to see evidence that the existing window opening has been modified to support the proposed alteration. All right. The last part. Uh, so the staff would want to see evidence that the existing window opening has been modified to support the alteration of that window opening. I said, we'll leave it at the business meeting. The, the question was. The window, the center window on the on the first floor, it looks like there was potentially some brickwork. Mm -hmm. The question was, was it modified at one point in time, or was that just fixing brickwork? Like looking for evidence of that specifically. I guess that had uh, questions about the lower right window in particular. They're just uh, at least from the photos submitted so far, it's hard to see evidence. Um, of modification like there is to the left uh, for the left window. Yeah, we had questioned whether those windows were original windows or if they were modified, bricked up at some point, just because they're an odd shape. Mm -hmm. uh, can... So what's proposed is we're modifying both windows on the first floor. Okay, so the center <laughs> window on the first floor um, it doesn't match any of the other windows on the first floor, and I believe that that was modified to put a kitchen in behind there. So I think it's it's my understanding that that was staff approved or recommended to change that to match the existing first floor windows that are everywhere else and make it line up again with the window above it. The the window. To the east of that, to the to the right in the photo, is just odd, and it doesn't it doesn't match the size or the alignment with the other odd window above it. So we were just going to try to sort of unify all of these windows on the first floor and leave one odd window on the back elevation. The other thing is. Those horizontal windows and the third floor windows are vinyl, and the <laughs> middle window on the first floor is a, a something clad wood window. I think it's a vinyl clad wood window. It's a it's another odd oddball. So it's I, I believe it's very clear that the center window has been modified. I don't I don't know what the history of the horizontal window on the first floor is. Okay. Further questions or comments from the commission?
So just just to be clear, we're we are if we were to approve this, we're approving both windows on the first floor being modified. Correct. In, in yes. masonry opening. Okay, because that's not what's written on the agenda. No. No. Well, because the other window was, I think, moved to staff approval. Oh. Is is that is that correct? That is correct. So, so the window that had evidence of it being altered, and uh, especially with the kitchen and the altered brick, we thought we could staff approve. The other window, however, um, we don't have evidence as of yet that the window opening has been modified, and that's the lower right horizontal window. So, for the commission. The lower right horizontal window, converting that to a standard double hung to match the staff approved proposed window in the center. Uh, Steve, what what does that window look into? Um, right now, it's into a bathroom, um, but there's no. Um, so I was wondering if the window could have been added at some point. It could have been. The thing that the, the thing that I that I think would be the closest would be some kind of a butler's pantry, but it doesn't make any sense in that location. Um, it doesn't make any sense that the header's higher. Well, when we put the new window in, the header will be at that height. They lowered that window, moved it over, and raised the sill in the, on the middle window. Okay. So that is the correct height on the window on the right? Yes. Yeah, it lines up with all of the other first floor windows. Okay. So they, they might have... I don't know, expanded it. I don't know, there's some there's some shadow lines, but they don't really have a lot to do with this window. And then the up the upper window, it, it feels like if the upper window and the lower horizontal window were similar, that would maybe make sense. But I don't know what that upper window is doing either. But we're not doing anything up there. So for the lower right window, are you going to be moving the center lot? Are you going to change the width at all? Or is it just going to be growing in height? We're changing the width and centering it under the window above. Yeah. So the header is going to slide over. Yeah. And the opening will slide over and then infill on the right to, to make the new location. Yes. Any any issues from the commission on the alterations to that window opening as submitted and clarified? No. All right. Uh, hearing none. Uh, the other item on here is the door uh, being replaced, going to a full light, flush, glazed, smooth fiberglass door. Original transom and frame. I believe uh, the question at the business meeting uh, had to do with that transom and how that is going to uh, integrate between the existing transom and the new door. We would just replace the slab. Okay. Do we have cut sheets or anything more on the door? Is it one of the accepted ones or whatever? I sent some in, I, I believe. But it should be located towards the. Uh, I don't think anything came through in the packet. But we were just proposing a full light uh, painted. Smooth door 
whether that is fiber. I, my preference is that it's a fiberglass door, but it's protected under the porch. So if, if wood is a preferred option, we can do wood. We're just trying to get more light in there. Ned, you have a, a an issue against the fiberglass door specifically? No, no. I, I just want some specificity to what is going in there. Would you be uh, agreeable to having that go to staff before the approval goes out? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I have no problem what seems to be illustrated there, as long as they're going to match the rails and the, the bottom and the top accordingly. Uh, Jacqueline, do you need any information from the commission on what to approve on that door? No, I think uh, we could staff approve her. That's fine. All right. There's no other questions. Is there a motion? On item GV20 dash. 09 015 95 East Bachelor. I move to approve as submitted with staff approval of a spec sheet on the door. Second. Uh, Commissioner Thiel had the first. Commissioner Durst had the second. Any questions on the motion? All right, take the vote. Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. And Durst? Aye. Burial. Commissioner Ferriel, you muted. I don't think oh, so. yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah, I muted again. I'm muted. I'm going to unmute you, so just hold on one second. Okay, I think I'm unmuted. Okay. We got you. What's your vote? <laughs> if I'm as muted, it was inadvertent. Uh, how do you vote? Aye. All right. Commissioner McCoy. Aye. Commissioner Foley. Aye. Chair votes <laughs> aye. Ayes have it. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. On to item number six, GV-20-09-016, 245 Jackson Street. I believe we have Mr. Bushman. Yes. All right. Uh, Mr. Bushman, please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I, and please state your name for the record. Uh, Bushman. Thank you very much. Jacqueline. This application is to replace a rotting garage door with a Hamilton Parker model 8500 garage door. The proposed garage door would be steel and contemporary style with no windows. Um, the color would be black. And if the material is not acceptable, the applicant has noted that they would be willing to choose wood applied over steel. And the applicant has submitted updated materials since the last business meeting showing a uh, smooth local door. All right. Uh, Mr. Bushman, anything to add? Uh, well, we'd strongly prefer something that doesn't rot <laughs> because uh, the existing door is, the garage is not so old. And it's uh, the door is already rotting, so we'd prefer to use. Uh, I called Hamilton Parker, and they said the steel door would be. Um, uh, it, it looks it would look just like wood, and it would be solid. It would be black. It wouldn't stick out, but it would be. It has a lifetime warranty, which sounds really good to us. All right, uh, and. Look at the application of the very last page. Is that the added information there, Jacqueline? It's like this Looking one forward. right there. Okay. Um, but it would, instead of dark brown, it would be black. And it's just a one car garage. It's not a three car garage, but that's the style. It would be uh, just solid black. Just want to make sure the commissioners were aware, aware of the specific uh, door style. That's the one. Okay. Uh, questions, comments from the commission?
I just want to check that the uh, finish of the fiberglass is smooth with no wood grain pattern. Correct. Okay. It's a little pamphlet that describes it. Which product is it that we're talking about? Because I'm looking at Wayne Dalton 8500, which is steel, not fiberglass. And That is steel. Yeah, it is steel. Okay, well, if it's steel, it's not going to be smooth steel, at least not any garage door that we've seen in recent memory. Um, well, I talked to the Hamilton Parker representative and sent um, photos of that model and it looks really smooth to me um it's it was that picture that had the brown three car garage that's exactly the same model um this one what i understand what we see is, is that these are that that all of the aluminum and steel garage doors that we've seen come through are um are patterned to recreate wood grain um and and that's kind of what this looks like although you can't i mean it's it's difficult to tell but it's difficult to tell the the issue that we've you know we've had is that that we haven't seen anybody come coming forward with a uh with a true flat panel door out of either fiberglass aluminum or steel yeah right I think, looked, go ahead. I, I'm sorry to interrupt. Is the preference that it that it have a wood grain or not have a wood grain? That it, it not. I don't think it does, um, based on the samples that I saw. But so just to kind of summarize the issue we've had in the past, we've been trying to find garage doors that are not wood since we, we know that a lot of homeowners would not like to have the wood doors for long-term maintenance purposes. Right. Um, what we've seen is that the, the smooth, quote unquote, smooth finish uh, on steel doors has a dimpled effect um, if, it's, if it doesn't have a wood grain. So we, we don't want the wood grain. We don't want the dimpled effect. And if we can get as smooth, less dimple as possible is kind of the, the sweet spot that's being looked for. Um, I believe that's what this is. Can you say a little bit more about the dimpled effect? What is that? Yeah, so if, if you kind of go out, uh, I don't have any specific locations in mind, but uh, it's almost like a, a uh, almost like a pebble finish. Yeah, pebble. Oh, I see. No, definitely. It's not that it's uh, from what I at least from what I could tell, talk uh, in the pamphlets and talking to the Hamilton Parker representative, it looked just totally smooth and uh we think black would be uh we don't want it to stick out we just don't want it to rot mm -hmm. so i i understand why we don't want the wood grain finish we don't want it to pretend to be what it's not i understand that completely and support it what's with why don't we like the dimpled which seems to be clearly distinguishable from wood so this this conversation came out there was an application um Last year, I believe it was. And I just don't remember the details of the COVID. COVID kind of, I can't tell exactly how long ago it was anymore. <laughs> it kind of doesn't exist. Uh, but there is an application for a garage that was set back from the street. Um, and I believe we had a test case. Um, looks like the divine here, 843 South Mozilla Street. Um, I believe that test case is still under test case status. Um, and there was an option of a, I'll call it a heavy dimple versus a light dimple. And we went with the light dimple version as the test case to see if that was a suitable solution uh, to this desire to not have wood garage doors. And I, I don't believe we hit the year mark on it to have the test case be done. So I don't if, believe there are dimples yeah. on uh, this one. So, and it is so, in an alley, it's not on a street. So not to be a fly in the ointment, but I don't know that a smooth steel door without dimples is actually a good idea because the reason they do that is to prevent oil canning. Correct. That's what my the surface. Next, that's where I was yeah. headed in my next statement. 
So yeah. there, there, it, I think it was a matter of trying to find a, a minimal dimpling to prevent the oil canning, um, not having the maximum dimpling so it looks rough to, to, to visual. Can you tell me what you mean by oil canning? Sorry, I'm not. Yeah, basically, when you have a long metal surface, the thermal uh, effects will kind of cause expansion and contraction of that. And so uh -huh. you'll actually get a wave to the to the door. <laughs> And it oh, won't see. look flat anymore over okay. time. So, so some dimpling is important because it gives it three dimension to keep that panel flat, but too much dimpling gives it a, a, a texture that is undesirable. I see. That's why we had the case study on, on that one application. Um, I guess the question for the commission is, are we be, do we know Jacqueline, if this is the same product or a different product from that test case? You know, I don't know. I have to look at some data and find out um, which address the test case belongs to and what product that is. Somebody in chat is identifying it. They believe it's yeah. their application at 842 South LaSalle Street. Yeah, they're, they're claiming it's a different product. The, the question for, for the commission, I, I guess, would be, would we be, since we are, are exploring the option of alternative products, would, would we be open to a second test case of a either non or minimally dimpled steel garage door um, to get kind of a compare and contrast analysis between the two? Or do we need to have more information, a hard sample from the minute? Well, we can't do hard samples because we don't have in-person in uh, meetings right now. Can I ask a question? Yes. Um, is there a, so our, we don't have our heart set on steel. We just don't want our door to rot. And mm -hmm. Is there an alternative material that the commit, the commission would say, oh yeah, go for that. That's, that's great. Like, I don't know. Um, I just talked to Hamilton mm -hmm. Parker and this is what they recommend because mm -hmm. I was told it should be smooth. Um, yeah. The the fallback we've done in, in past time, uh, well, it was the wood doors. Wood doors are expensive and, and whatnot. Uh, there's been successful applications where we, they've taken a, a flat steel door and then applied wood on top of it to give it the wood veneer, but still having the, the benefits of a steel door. Okay. Um, but you still have the wood material on the face of it, which will require some some maintenance over time. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, so that's that's kind of a uh, we've done it before. We can approve that, no problem. What um, about fiberglass? I don't think we found a fiberglass door. Most of those are are uh, paneled or wood grain textured, from what we have seen. Okay, thank you. So I mean, we're looking for a solution. Just none has been presented to us at this point in time. We have approved aluminum frame doors with glazing panels in them. Done that. You know, a couple of contemporary structures we've approved that, yeah. You no, know, I the garage up the street from me, you approved no. the garage was old. Yeah. Well, I'm open to um suggestions from the commission, especially if you know if something's been approved and you're really happy with it. Um send me some information about it. I just talked to our contractor and who recommended Hamilton Parker. And so I contacted them and I explained that we needed something that was smooth and this is what they recommended, but I'm certainly not a garage door expert. Mm -hmm. um, I just don't want to be painting it and repairing it all the time. Uh, understood. Uh, so for, for the commission, is there any heartache, anybody against a, a test case on this new product. Are you comfortable with the information provided or do we need to have more information in order to get a test case? And then we can kind of go from there. Yeah, we've got garage doors all over the place as far as materials and everything else go. I, I don't think there's any harm in doing a test case. Agreed. Any thoughts against? Agreed. So Thank you very much. Mr. Bushman, so if, if you'd like us to, are you, are you asking us to vote on the steel door as you've applied? Yeah, sure, put here? because Hamilton okay. Parker said it has a lifetime warranty. Okay. Uh, it won't rot, it's smooth. 
Um, and if it's smooth like we expect, you may have brought us a wonderful thing. No. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll keep okay. you posted. Yeah, do. <laughs> so we got to take the vote here. So is there a, a motion from the commission? Certainly on item GB 2009-16. 245 Jackson Street, I move to approve as submitted and considered a test case. Second. All right, and clarification on the test case, uh, we typically want to be notified, have notified staff um, after it's installed, and then we'll start the, the 12 month clock so we can take a look. It's on an alley, so the commission can walk by it at your leisure okay, sure. uh, to, to look at it. So, yeah, let us know when it's installed. Okay, sure. All right, any questions on the motion? We'll take the roll call. Commissioner Panzer? I'm going to abstain on this. Commissioner Thiel? Yes. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Ferriel? Aye. Commissioner oh. McCoy? Aye. Commissioner Foley? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Application passes. Can I Thank ask one much. more question? Yes, sir. So I, I've never encountered the word test case, so I understand that you'll be looking at it in a year, or, or well, I'll send you photos after it's done, and then you'll check it out in a year. What ha what happens if it's if you don't like it in a year? Do I? You you keep it. We just don't approve it again. Oh, I see. Okay, thank yeah. you. Not a problem. Okay. Sorry for all the questions. All right. Oh no, it's good. Thank you. All right, moving on to I agenda item number seven. That's me again. Uh, <laughs> GV 20-09-017, 247 Jackson Street. Let the record show that Mr. Bushman is still sworn in. All right. Sure, uh, this is it. I'm just going to jump in for one second and just note that I'm getting a lot of feedback from typing noises from a couple commissioners. So I will mute if I hear it, but please just make sure you unmute before you speak. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. All right, Jacqueline. Okay, so this application involves replacing existing asphalt shingles on the rear of the house with synthetic slate shingles. The main portion of the house has an existing slate roof. The applicant notes that a structural engineer believes the original shingles at the rear were originally slate. The applicant would like to replace the existing asphalt shingles on the front porch as well with synthetic slate, um, as well as the garage. Um, the applicant noted that the structural engineer cannot confirm whether the front porch was formerly slate. Um, some feedback from the mission meeting or the business meeting from August 18th. The commissioners have noted that synthetic shingles have been used as a test cases in the past and have appeared to be successful with single color white spectrum blend thought to be the best color option. Commissioners did ask staff to confirm brands or products of synthetic slate used in the past. Uh, and staff has con confirmed that the proposed EcoStar manufacturer for this application has been previously it's been at least one test case. Uh, the one I specifically could find was 220 Sycamore Street. Um, no recent synthetic slate approvals from other districts uh, outside of German Village could be confirmed uh, from other staff. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bushman, any other yes, uh, questions? Yes. So we had a structural engineer check out our house, and our house is actually two parts the, the brick part in the front, which has the existing slate um and then our house is yellow painted brick and the back part of our house is actually contains two parts a master uh, the largest bedroom and then a back room and the structural engineer was all was positive that the very back part of the house you can see uh it's closest to me that that probably had originally slate shingles, but the structure between the bedroom between the two did not what he, he would not. He didn't think it would support slate shingles because they're quite heavy. Um, and um, so what he recommended is that the back since the house is kind of divided in half anyway with the red brick at the front and the yellow painted brick at the back that he recommended that the asphalt shingles he said you can make that look a lot better just by using synthetic slate shingles they can cut them 
in the same shape as the front part of the house. Um, like this shape right here, this honeycomb shape, a uh, hexagon shape or whatever it is. And he said it'll look a lot better than um, asphalt shingles. And the garage is also yellow that we just talked about. And he said it would look r really good. There, There's a garage. He said it would look really good to just have the back part of the house synthetic slate shingles and they're a lot less he heavy and they have like a lifetime warranty and they last i don't know he said 75 year to 100 years or more um um but he said you don't want to put slate up there if you, especially over your master bedroom if it's not structurally ready for the for those shingles because they're <clears throat> super heavy so that's what the structural engineer recommended. And um, yeah, and you can see the color, the person's pointing, it's kind of gray, which is closest uh, the uh, roofer could find to our existing shingles on the red brick part of the house. And uh, they, uh, if you look at the pamphlet I sent, they do, um, or if you just Google this online, they do, um, they don't have to come in squares. They do the honeycomb uh, shape as well. Okay. So we just think it would be a lot better, more attractive than asphalt shingles. It would last a lot longer. It'd be more, uh, we just thought it would make the house look more attractive and more authentic. Understood. I, can I break in here for a second yes. uh, a few things first of all the the house that was referenced as having this product on it is my house so i i know a thing or two about this stuff oh good um, there there actually are two other installations that already exist within the village one at 225 lear and the other one at six something mohawk um and there is a fourth that has been approved at 576 south fifth on the corner of um fifth and back. Um, a couple things. One is you can't cut these things to make them um, beveled corner. Mm -hmm. They do have a product that comes beveled corner, beveled corner, but you can't cut them in the field the way you can um, um, natural slate. The, I don't think that's a problem because I, given the, the nature of the uh, the portions of the roof that you're redoing, I don't particularly think it would be appropriate to use the um, the beveled slate. I think that the rectangular slate would be more more appropriate, given the fact that it it is clearly a different structure that was added on to the original, even though it's likely to have been a very early addition. Maintaining some differentiation there, I yeah, think it's the would oldest be, actually. Be appropriate. The, is the oldest portion? The back part of our house was built in 1852, and the front part about 1872. I think. So. Interesting, fascinating. Yeah. I well, I, I, I okay. I, I still, <clears throat> whether it's that way or the other way, it, it, it still, I think, would call for um, a differentiation between those two. Okay. Um, that, that's my my personal feeling. The the color. Is, is fine. Um, the warranty, if you get the right warranty, it's a 50 year warranty, though it's likely to right. last much longer than that. Yeah, um, that's what they said. And it, it's a great product. I, I went through the same research that, that you went through, and uh -huh. we actually went from uh, asphalt shingles on our house um, to, uh, to this EcoStar product, which, which we've been very, very pleased with. Um, I think the color of picking a single color and asking for a wide spectrum. Uh, which gives you a little variation in the uh, in the colors between tiles is the right way to go. We've okay. all seen it done in several ways. We've seen it done in like six uh, separate colors in three wide spec, which is what ours is, and in a single color. Um, and I think the single color wide spec it, it seems to be the one that's that that most people are most pleased with. Uh, so I have a question. Are you finished? Sure. Okay. Uh, my question is, you think it would look better to have the, re the rear part of our house in 
rectangular shingles than to try to match the honeycomb ones. Is that what you you're won't saying? Be, you won't be able to match the be, the the the, uh, the beveled corners um, are unlikely to, to match exactly the beveled corners, and they're the character of the material, while very close to is to synthetic slate, is is not an identical match. So I, I think that once you start with the differentiation, I think you're better off kind of carrying it through. That's my personal opinion. Let me let me put it this way. If you were to say you really wanted the beveled, beveled corner, I would still be in favor of it because I think it's a, a great improvement over uh, asphalt shingles anyway. I'm just right. saying if it were my house, I would probably use the square square cut on the garage and on the... Uh, and on the addition, but that's that's a fielder's choice. I mean, that's just your opinion. Okay. Else? The commission. Anybody else have a feeling, one way or the other, or good to go with either option? Sounds like there's no preference either way. I would support the rectangle shingle. Yep. The differentiation between the yellow brick part and the um, natural brick. Okay. Well, it look a lot better than the asphalt for sure. So, it's a great product. Great product. The installers like it. Everybody likes it. Okay. Would you mind? So, did you use the same brand that we? Yeah. Were? Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. That's what our roofer recommended. So, okay. All right. Uh, I think that's we're just talking about shingles. So, uh, like we, you know, <clears throat> has the, the, the most uh, favor on the commission, at least stated. Um, would you, Mr. Bushman, are you looking to go with the rectangular? Yeah, sure. If that's what the commission recommends, I defer to the commission. Thanks for the good advice. Any other questions to the commission? If not, is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, I have a motion on agenda item number 7, GV 20-09-17, to approve as clarified that the EcoStar rectangular slate, synthetic slate will be used. Second. All right, Commissioner Durst had the second. Are there any questions on the motion? Uh, Spencer, did you mention the the single color wide spectrum? Um, I did not, but please uh, add that. I to made the a note of that. Work. Thank you. Yep. Single color wide spectrum. Okay. So I thought you could add that to the to the. Uh, to the yeah, I made a note of that. Thank you. Absolutely. Yep. All right. We'll take the vote. Commissioner Panzer. Aye. Commissioner Thiel. Commissioner Thiel. Aye. There we go. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Farrell. Aye. Commissioner McCoy. Aye. Commissioner Foley. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, moving on to item number eight, GV-20-09-018842 South Lozelle Street. And Mr. Devine, Devine? Devine. Devine, there we go. Uh, looking for your camera. There it is. Please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. And your name for the record? Uh, James Devine. There we go. All right, Jacqueline. This applicant uh, would like to replace their existing asphalt gutters with the standard OG gutters. The applicant is aware of staff recommendation regarding gutters as well as the commission feedback provided at the business meeting. Um, and both staff and the commission caution that the OG gutters on an angled fascia would cause water to dump out and possibly create additional issues and greater costs in the future. Um, so that the applicant uh, is would still like this to be reviewed due to the great cost of installing the half round gutters or new half round gutters. All right, does the applicant have anything else to add? Yeah, please. Um, and so uh, forgive me if this is like misclassified, uh, if it was supposed to be a conceptual review, uh, I, I wasn't entirely sure. I, I don't imagine you're going to approve this, uh, especially based on what I heard in the, the meeting in, in middle of August. 
Really what I want to have is just a conversation on what I can do. And so I, you know, I've been quoted for half round gutters for about, you know, $15,000, which is, you know, 5% of my home's value. And, and I can't afford that. Um, and I've got, you know, leaks in these gutters that have been fixed multiple times. I have, uh, and I wish I had a picture of it. I'm sorry, uh, water that just dumps over those gutters. Uh, and, and so what the, what the roofer instructed me is that they're not sufficiently wide, even if he could rehang them, they, they just need to be wider. Uh, and so I just want to know, you know, what are my options? What can I do? Or is the answer just, you know, sorry, Jimmy spends $15,000 on new gutters. All right. Anybody from the commission want to take that one? I mean, the only thing I want to take is, is yeah. first of all, half round gutters are what belong on this house. Let's just start there. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, $15,000 for six inch aluminum half round gutters just sounds totally out of whack um, with anything that that I've had done or, or, or seen done. Um, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, I, so, so maybe I'm just maybe I'm just a chump here, and I need to get a few more quotes. I, you know, I I, I certainly wouldn't. I would not agree with the first because you're trying to do this the right way, and you're coming to us and asking for a conversation on it. So, what? However, you would characterize the situation. I would not characterize it as you being a chump. Uh, in in term, and, and we appreciate it greatly. In terms of, uh, of, of whether, I, I think you, you've got to go and, and talk to some people, uh, you know, whether they were quoting for copper gutters, which is not something that we would ever require in this kind of a circumstance. Um, you know, six inch half round gutters, you can go out to uh, roofers wholesale um, uh, and, and take a look at them uh, and, and see what, you know, how they're installed and, and see the the type of materials that are used but th this seems like a fairly straightforward situation of of needing to use half round gutters um in a in a six inch size and and make sure that whoever hangs them knows what they're doing um because at one of the critical things about gutters is that they get hung at the right elevation so that they don't get ripped off by snow and so that they catch the maximum am amount of water but I don't think there's any question as to what the appropriate solution is here. I'll throw in my two cents. I, I got half rounds on, on my property and uh, I just had them redone. Uh, the, the gutters themselves were not in bad condition. Uh, so I actually had them uh, refinished, repainted on the, on the outside and relined on the inside. Um, saved a ton of money that way. Um, so I would definitely get a couple of quotes from a, a few different reputable uh, Better guys who actually do half round. It sounds like this is, again. This is my opinion. It sounds like whoever you got the, the quotes from, either a didn't want to do half rounds, maybe they got a stock of K style in in their shop, uh, or they are K style gutter guys um, or gals. Um, and, and also, when you look at the hanging of them, uh, the type of hanger, the gauge of hanger, the thickness of hanger, um, can also have a a impact on on if those gutters when they're loaded with water. If they're tipping down uh, outwards versus staying kind of in place, um, so that the type of the type of hanger, how it gets hung, make sure the hangers under your shingles as opposed to on top of the shingles. Uh, and the final thing that I found is all my gutters drain to the back of the house. So it's a series of from one set of gutters drain to a different set of gutters to a different set of gutters. Uh, the final back gutter was too small, so the, the load of the water coming back to it would be upsized from a I think it was a four or five inch or six inch just to catch all the extra water and making sure that they're actually sloped properly. Um, so especially with half rounds, you don't have the necessarily the volume compared to a smaller K style. So making sure that the slope is right. So the water is actually running down the gutter and not just overflowing because your gut gutters aren't sloped correctly. Just looking at the pictures, it's hard to tell, but it looks like there's not a whole lot of slope to the gutter um, from one end to the other. So that may be another issue of why you're seeing some water overflow. So a couple of questions to ask, but definitely at least get three, three quotes from folks um, who do gutters and not just uh, uh, a single 
company because keep it honest. I appreciate that feedback. Commissioner Panzer, you mentioned um, aluminum gutters. And uh, my understanding is that for a quality half round gutter, they need to be uh, hand soldered you know, or something that's hand solderable and that aluminum isn't conducive to that. Or and again, are they just blowing smoke at me? Uh, they're not blowing smoke, but if they're talking about hand soldering, they're talking about copper gutters. Um, and the idea that, that, the, that the gutters on your house would cost $15,000 if done in copper doesn't surprise me even a little. Um, but we've had uh, half round aluminum gutters on this house for 20 years. And with the exception of one on my porch that drives me crazy because it wasn't installed properly when it was installed before I owned the house, um, we've never had any problems with them. Okay, that's helpful. As alternative, it's got, they've got to be done by somebody who understands how half round gutters work. They they are they're not like putting up K style gutters. They they do run a little bit differently. Mr. Chairman, I've got to absent myself for just a moment, but go you know go ahead. I'll be back in a moment. Sure. Uh, and as alternative is also steel. I've got steel half rounds on my house. A little more solid than than aluminum, maybe potentially um, different costs. But again, it's another option just to make sure that you're not getting quoted. Copper. And I don't believe it was copper that they were quoting me, but I, I could be I could be incorrect there. But yeah, I definitely appreciate the feedback, um, and and definitely we'll we'll come back to you all with uh, with a more suitable option. the The last question I have is, and maybe you're not experts on this, uh, is just how this all is routed is back through that like single corner of my house. Uh, is it acceptable okay. to put more downspouts on this on this home? Yeah. I, I would, in my opinion, I think that would probably be the most appropriate. Having that uh, that long of a run is not the best. Uh, looks like that's the rear of the house that's currently up on the screen. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. Yeah, dropping a second one if you need to tie an underground to uh, another um, storm line. That's that's not a problem. Uh, looking through the pictures, looking to see if we have anything on the front of the house. If you don't tie it into the storm drains, too, I mean, there are ways to direct it away from your foundation. Um, yeah, you, you have that kind of on your porch on that picture there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, adding extra downspouts is not a big deal. We don't want to see a downspout down the center of the front of your house or anything like that, but on the rear, for sure, on the side, that's not not, not an issue. Great. Uh, in that case, uh, I don't I don't think you need to vote on this, but uh, uh, thank you for your time and, and thank you for the advice. I appreciate it. And for the record, if, if if you do go to need an application, what we can do is we can vote on continuing the application. So it stays in the agenda for next month that we don't got to go through a whole new reapplication process. Yeah, that's that's that sounds like a great idea. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Foley, do you have something else to add? Or uh, I was just gonna comment that the we're not supposed to consider cost at this phase, but Putting it in percentage of the value of the home was one of the most compelling arguments for cost I've <laughs> I've ever heard, and I appreciate the perspective on that. But I'll go ahead and motion uh, to continue. Uh, I lost it. Are we on seven or eight? Eight. eight. Uh, GV twenty o nine o one eight. There a second. Second. All right. Any questions on the motion? Take the vote. I believe Commissioner Panzer is still away. No, I'm I'm back, but I think that since I did have to step away, it would only be appropriate that I recuse myself. Thank you. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Ferriel? Aye. Commissioner McCoy? Aye. Commissioner Foley? Aye. Fair votes aye. Ayes have it. Motions can, motion to continue is passed. Thank you, Commissioners. Appreciate what you do for German Village. <laughs> Uh, we shall move on to item number nine, GV-20-09-019. This is a 122124 <clears throat> off the street. Do we have Mary uh, Ryder for another applicant for 122124 East Costa Street? Uh, third call for 122124 East Costa Street. All right, hearing no applicant, I'm going to go ahead and put that one on the back burner. We'll move on to item number 10, GV-20-09-020, 874 South 
Fifth Street. Inform Dan Powell. Yeah, Dan Powell is here. All right, Mr. Powell, uh, I see your face. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and but the truth? I do. And please state your name for the record. Uh, Dan Powell, Blackrock Landscaping. Thank you very much. Uh, Jacqueline? Because this application involves the installation of approximately 140 square feet of new clay brick at the rear and the side of the home to match the existing clay brick. Um, it also involves the installation of new clay brick on the porch located on the side of the home to match the existing clay brick. Um, some feedback from the August 18th German Village business meeting included that the commissioners going to add new brick on the concrete base may create an issue with the water table and height issue with the steps, and that the brick material in general was not recommended for the porch base. The commissioners requested a plan sketch showing proposed areas of new clay brick, and the applicant did provide uh, an additional plan sketch here on the screen. Thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, does the applicant have anything else to add? Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, I know there was questions about the uh, brick on the porch. Um, I mean, the porch, uh, once you come out of the doorway is approximately about a seven inch step. Uh, so if we added brick to that, it'd probably be about a four and a half inch step. Um, and the porch is pitching properly away from the home. Uh, so water would drain properly, um, but definitely not opposed uh, to doing like a veneer brick on the porch to uh, lessen that. Uh, so you'd have a little bigger step coming out of the home. So the the, the issue with uh, with the porch specifically when we say the water table, um, uh -huh. hopefully on the property there's a, a band of stone or there's where your foundation meets the right structure and you have your. Um, the, the stone under the door itself. Uh, typically, we don't have porches extend up past that piece of stone under the door. Okay. Um, and so putting a brick or even a veneer from the pictures, it doesn't look like there's a gap for the veneer to be until it starts getting up higher from the bottom of that stone under the door. So okay. That's the issue at hand that we have with it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we can we can definitely dismiss dismiss doing uh, the brick on the porch at this time, and I mean, I can talk to the homeowner about that. Other options um, there to you could seal the concrete, you could replace the concrete, you could paint the concrete. There's a couple other options there as well. Okay, put a rug on it. That's another option. <laughs> right. Uh, so as far as the the clay brick pavers out in the yard, looks like the last page of the application shows where you'd like to put the new. If they require some zooming in, there is a differentiation of color that you can see as you get a little closer. I'm I'm colorblind, but I think I can. I on can on the previous that. on the previous pictures where there's uh, gravel uh, next to the existing uh, pavers, uh, that's where she would like to do uh, additional pavers to to match the uh, existing ones. Am I correct that all of these pavers are dry laid in a gravel and sand base? Yes, sir. And clarification, uh, the question was asked, we, we don't want to have concrete base underneath the company the no. for water. Yep. yep, no, it'd be a gravel base. Yep. So just for my clarification, looking at the, the fourth sheet, uh, again, a little colorblind here, but basically, most of the existing brick for the most part is the perimeter uh, away from the house on the rear and you're in filling in between the existing and the, and the house. On the side of the house, I'll say the upper portion of that picture. Uh, looks like you're you're filling in again from the existing brick walk to the house a little bit of new on the top right corner there. Yes, now sir. The south right corner you're filling in basically from the existing brick away from the house. Yes. Okay. Just out of care, are you literally just filling that in or are you pulling all the brick up? Uh, so whatever needs leveled, we're going to pull up and relay so everything is level and pitching properly away from the home. Just make sure it's not pitching into the neighbor's house. Correct. <laughs> and then so you're leaving all that existing patterning. So the, the, the drawing we're seeing now is a little a little misleading because I believe it shows all the brick going in the same way. Not that we really necessarily yeah, care just, too much, but you know, I'm just trying to understand. 
Yes, we're just basically going to follow the same pattern. You're going to pull up the border okay. uh, of the brick and then uh, continue with the same pattern. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Yep. Any other questions or comments from the commission? Mr. Chairman, I have a motion on agenda item number 10, GV 20 09 020, to approve as amended by the applicant uh, to remove uh, addition, to remove the addition of brick on the porch from the application. Second. Any questions on the motion? No. I'll take the vote. Uh, Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Commissioner Deal? Aye. Mr. Durst. Aye. Mr. Ferriel. Jeff. Mr. Ferriel, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. All right. How do you vote? <laughs> so you're mute, unmuting me while I'm unmuting me. You're, you're unmuted. How do you vote? Aye. 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 There we go. Commissioner McCoy. Aye. Commissioner Foley. Aye. It's like a Laurel and Hardy skidding here. Sometimes. Uh, chair <laughs> votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Application passes. I was Thank thinking, you. I was thinking of more of a trio. <laughs> All right. Moving on to item number 11, GV-20-09-021. Uh, 648 Mohawk. Mr. Chairman, I am going to recuse myself from this and turn off my camera. All right. Thank you. It's for eight Mohawk. Do we have uh, Ms. Grant or another applicant? Yes, I'm here. Although I don't see my picture there and my camera is on here on this end. I see your name. Yeah, but I do have my camera on, so I'm not sure why. It might be a, a bandwidth or connectivity issue. I don't know if you're on your phone or computer, but if we can't yeah, get it up, maybe another know. device. Um, I normally don't have a problem. I, I have plenty of bandwidth. Um, can we do it without looking? I can see if I can figure out. Um, yeah, I don't normally have a problem with the band. I haven't so far. I do lots of Zoom meetings. Um, it, my, um, camera's open, it's on. Can you try turning it off and then back on? Not the whole thing, just the camera. Uh, the camera? Where do, I, where do I do that? At the bottom of your screen, if you're hovering your mouse over it, um, Oh, I... got it. I see. Look at that. Thank you. Sorry about that. There okay, she okay, is. Go. Hey, can see you. <laughs> All righty. Technology overcome. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. And please state your name for the record. Sue Grant. Thank you very much. All right, Jacqueline. This application involves removing the existing brick at the old porch entry and at the side of the house. It also involves cleaning up extra soil piled up against the existing iron fence. The applicant would like to install a new brick walkway to the recently added front door located at the side of the house. And to install a new brick walkway to the backyard. Um, I would also like to install new plating for the submitted plan, and this would uh, include boxwood hedge, incredible hydrangea, and then a couple of other different vegetation listed there. Uh, the applicant has responded to feedback from the business meeting, um, specifically that they would wish to retain some of the character of the original cottage and entry by leaving the fence and steps, which are in place that no retaining wall will be required and that the soil on the side of the steps will be graded smoothly so that the soil doesn't spill onto the steps or sidewalk. The grade on the right side of the steps will be rounded out at the top in order to better transition the grade. And the grade to the left of the steps and in front of the porch will be similar to the existing grade, which has not required a retaining curve wall previously. That can also notice that when the thick layer of existing leaves is removed from the base of the fence in front of the porch area, uh, the bottom of the fence will be visible. And on the right side of the steps, the soil will be recreated to match the left side instead of being piled up against the fence. All righty. Uh, Ms. Grant, do you have anything to add? Uh, no, I don't. All right. Questions, comments from the commission? 
Just one one note, which is an easy note. Um, brick could be Belden Velcrest seven sixty herringbone laid on base. Uh, can we assume that's laid on a dry base? Yes, base rock. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I have a motion. Agenda item 11, GV 20-09-021 to approve as, I guess, is it technically as submitted or as amended by the client? Clarified by the client. Or as clarified by the client. Second. Clarified by the applicant, sorry. There we go. Second. All right, any questions on the motion? Uh, I do have one, one quick question. I made a motion before I could ask it. Uh, the steps are to remain the current existing steps. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Just wanted to clarify that. All right. Uh, no questions on the motion. We'll take the vote. Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Commissioner Thiel is uh, recused. Uh, Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Ferriel? Aye. Commissioner McCoy? Aye. Commissioner Foley? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, we'll do a quick call back uh, to 122, 124 East Costa Street. Costa Street. No applicant yet for that. All right, we'll go forward uh, to item number 12. This is a conceptual review for GV 20 09 022 325 7 East Livingston Avenue. Is Mr. Hugis on still? I don't see him. We lost Mr. Hugis. Somewhere along the line. Jacqueline, this wasn't one of the ones that we were going to uh, take off the application, was it? No, those have, there's two that have been removed. This was a conceptual that was still yeah. on the application. Um, so. With regard to the other one where the applicant is also not in attendance, they have and modify their proposal so you may be able to uh, approve it as submitted. I don't know if you want to take a look at that. Sure, we can take a look at it. This is one we were painting brick, I believe. Yes, yeah. so they have changed a couple of different things um, in response to the feedback they received uh, from the business meeting. Okay. If I can look at this right, it looks like instead of having the black thing, they're going with a colonial revival gray and origami white on the field of brick. Here's to not painting the stone foundation anymore. That's correct. And they're also not proposing to use a sealant. So they removed that part from the application. And then the repainting wood trim, repainting garage, and standing or painting fence with the same colors existed. Is any commissioner, real quick, we got uh, Commissioner Thiel back on the record, by the way. Uh, any commissioners have any issue approving or voting on the application without the uh, applicant here? Any problems with the application as submitted? If there's no no apprehension against voting, and there's no problems being voiced. Is there a motion, Mr. Mr. Chairman? I have a motion on agenda item number nine, GV twenty zero nine nineteen, to approve as submitted. Second. I'd like to make a clarification on the motion that specifically uh, we are entertaining the idea of painting brick because it ex has existing paint on the brick. We're not painting an un unpainted brick or stone items. That's correct. All right. Uh, we'll take the vote. Uh, Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Farrell? Aye. Commissioner McCoy? Aye. Commissioner Foley? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. 
All right. Back to item 12, the conceptual review of 325327 East Livingston. I don't think he's here yet. He couldn't get a decent connection before, so that doesn't surprise me. That's true. Um, I know there were still some outstanding questions from the business meeting, but I don't know if anyone would want to give some feedback since it is a conceptual review. Yep. Uh, so on this application, if I remember correctly from the business meeting, the parking, uh, they are maintaining existing parking quantities that were more than what was required correctly. There's no parking variance required. I think the big question on the table was how do we treat this structure uh, as a addition to a primary structure since they have a connector between the two, not a new freestanding structure. And there's a piece of a garage inside the addition to the primary structure I think was a concern. All right, and the, the general proposed uh, conceptual review was in regard to the zoning. Um, the current zoning is C4, and there are two existing mm -hmm. single residential units and two separate buildings. So the concept review was the addition of two residential units, as we discussed, um, to the empty front area, like Livingston, with parking provided for one car per bedroom for all the units. And then they noted that the concept proposal will require use variants um, as well as the parking variants. I think we have precedence of allowing first floor residential on a C4 use. Uh, if we look at the Cedar Square, we did that because we had existing residential there. Well, I would say, I don't think there'd be any heartache not putting a uh, personal residential use. I think our question was why the connector? Yeah. And I'm wondering whether it's just like an open porch to shelter that front door that's sort of shown on the existing building. But we don't know. We don't know. Yeah. Right. We need, a little, we need a little more of architecture. Yep. I'm wondering about the parking variants. One, two, three, four, five. They're showing plus five. the garage. Yeah, there's one in the garage. So it looks like there's six. One, two. Okay. Whoever's moving, whoever's controlling the world, stop moving that for a moment. <laughs> Making me a little nauseous. Okay, we got one unit, two, three, four units, which would in theory require eight spaces, correct? Is it two per or is it one and a half per? I think it's 1.5. Well, 1. 5. it's screwy. So that it's would be 1.5 uh, on a single site or is it 1.5? It's 1.5 for multiple housing, multi, multi, multiple housing, but the city is granting one point everywhere. Well, well, well so, but, so but according, according to code, you believe, according to code, the common wisdom here is that 1.5 would be required. Yep. Yep. So if it's 1.5 and we've got, what do they say, four units, it's six spaces. Right. That's it. That's, they've got it. Yeah. And they have it. So I don't understand the parking variance. That's where we're going to need some, some information from the applicant. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I've not received any uh, response back from the business meeting feedback that was sent out. Uh, it sounds like it's basically the same questions, understandably. Okay. Jeff, anything else you want us to talk about with this one here? I think we addressed all the items on there. Yeah, I think that that's everything. All right, uh, and then 
So I think that ends our meeting. Uh, I guess we can vote. And then after we vote, if we can do a quick chat about the uh, uh, caretakers awards. What are we voting on? Well, to end the meeting. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Yeah, Anthony, right. a bunch of us have to go to the Schumacher Place Civic Association meeting. Understood. Uh, I would say that if you if you can just submit to me uh, your nominations real quick uh, this week, find the ones we had. All right. Uh, so we had a a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All right. Uh, Commissioner Panzer. Aye. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Ferial. Aye. Commissioner McCor. Coy? Aye. Commissioner Foley? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. We are adjourned. Just just FYI for everybody, I looked up the zoning code for four or more dwelling units, 1.5 spaces per unit. So we confirm that. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody, for your time. Please give me nominations for the, uh, the caretakers. If anybody's got a record of the notes that we took hey, last time we talked. Hey, and Anthony, Anthony, just so since you didn't ask me, I vote against it. <laughs> against the 